<laughs> it happens. Okay. There we go. Perfect. Excellent. And just giving it a good, solid grasp. A good squeeze. Uh, 
it's easy for you to um, break an addiction though um, I see healthy blood flow so if I could just flip your palm there's some scratches here so you're very sensitive and I see your vein color that's good um, shows your strength again if it's easier for me to see your veins you exercise a lot do you not I do see that you definitely leave your mark on the world, I see through your fingerprints, but in a quiet, subtle way, it's like you influence everything without being in front of the curtain. Is that correct? Uh, so people don't even know the changes you contribute to, or the cause and effect, right? Like a butterfly effect, sort of like you do one thing and then people don't realize that effect. 15,000 other things. You don't like to be in crowds. Crowded places, people make you a little uncomfortable, naturally, but you don't mind stepping out into the world. It just makes you uh, feel odd and awkward at times. Like you don't know what you're doing with yourself. I would say you are peculiar, you're a curious person, but you know your limits. Also, to have your moments where you can get obsessed about something and then you can just as easily let it go like you would an addiction. I see not a supremely long, lengthy life, but long enough. Average length or a bit longer. 60s through 80s, perhaps. Sometimes even there's a sliver of hope for 90s. Still pretty long, you know, most people don't want to live long. Um, they just want to live good. <laughs> I don't think um, most people want to be here <laughs> very long. At least what people tell me. But you're uncertain. There are a lot of uncertainties about your life, and I would say it's like switching your mind and both hands very different so you like switching your thoughts or your mind about you know like um well, how would i say this you want to do one thing then you do another you start a project you don't finish it or um you get obsessed about one thing and then you want to switch it up and do another like it's hard for you to interlink what a hobby is and what is something you do for career maybe you intermingle both or your hobbies are only the passions that make you money or because i do see money good here love is divided on and off breakups divorces etc but they last um a generally long period of time so maybe six months to a year one to two years two to five years I don't see any longer than that. Ooh, um, so there's a great divide here. So it's like, I would say at the bottom of your hand, it's like your group setting, your group environment. Who you work with, it, it's more, it's difficult for you to just get along with just anyone or you're always the one doing the work. Um, you're chiseled out to do the work. But you still have a lack of confidence in what you contribute. You're uncertain about your confidence even. Sometimes you are, sometimes you aren't. So this is almost like a switchy attitude or personality about you or different parts of you that are conflicting with each other all your life. I can feel your heart beat pretty good by the base of your thumb. So I would say you are overall healthy and there's nothing to worry about. And you're very passionate, and you feel the heat from your hand. Maybe even have some, I would say, healing abilities and gifts. But overall, it's a pasty pale complexion versus the uh, rest of your skin, so I would say. Um, maybe you get burned out easily, or tired, or you just lose hope quickly, so. Your faith is often tested. But there's always that sliver of hope for you. I think 
say you like to switch up roles. It's almost like you're an actor in a movie. Sometimes it's hard for you to mean what you even say. <laughs> but you mean well. I see a nice, gentle nature to you. This doesn't feel unpure. So sometimes they have to do something that appears 
is bad. Like you see a ghost knock over a book. That's not because they're malicious. It's because they're saying, hey, you know, I'm trying to warn you. Get out of this house. Like there's something, someone coming and you're not supposed to be here. Or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Or sometimes it's just they want you to leave because the butterfly effect of you not leaving that house is going to have an issue to someone that's really important someday in the world. So that's how spirit works. So I think you definitely are in tune with spirit and understanding the connection and nature of that. Maybe sometimes feel their presence, right? Yeah, that's what I get out of you. I'm a psychic intuitive, so sometimes I pick up those energies from people. Um, the hands tell me a lot, okay? People's hands sometimes tell you more than the eyes. Like, the eyes tell you a lot, but uh, there can be, again, the eyes are just what you, what's within you, what you perceive. So people are going to look at eyes differently. They say eyes are window to the soul, not because you're looking at someone else's soul. You're looking at yourself. Someone else's eyes are the window to your soul. We forget that. So my eyes could be looked at as um, different things to people. Um, your eyes look like something different to me than what the person down the street would see your eyes as. So it's really just reflecting you. <laughs> so... Um, I would say, um, basically, oh, that's interesting. Is that a scar? Oh, no, that's just a little wrinkle on your knuckle. <sighs> well, you do get some dryness too here. And not uh, do you eat, eat enough fruits and vegetables? Okay, good, yeah. You're overall healthy. That nice purpling to your nails. Yeah, sometimes we get this little, like, skin tag thingies, not skin tag, what do they call those little like peeling skins and then you peel them and they hurt, they sting, right? It's like a sour sting, like you put lemon on that and it stings like hell. Um, so you don't have, you just have one of those, which is a good sign. You have healthy nails, they're smooth, they're not um, too grooved. You want to have like, if I run my nail like this, you want to feel the groove, but you don't want to feel it when you do this. Um, they're not swollen or inflamed, so there's no liver disease issues. They're tiny, which is good. It matches your fingers well. Again, representing your inner child. You're very tiny. <laughs> it's like your body may not be like physically like a child, obviously, like you're not like three foot tall, you know what I'm saying? But your um, extremities are, you know, like the hands, the feet, um, certain body parts, okay? They can, like they're smaller than normally usual, okay? Um, and we're all shaped differently, but yeah, this is, this tells me a lot about your, you, you enjoyed childhood, you felt great, you were Oh, did you get that scratch on your nail, or was that always the... Okay, yeah, those are hard to heal. Was that from the nail salon? Okay. Yeah, that was not, like... Okay. So that's no fault of your own. All right. Although, again, I do see one thumb is, like, extremely smooth. I, I can't even feel the grooves. The other thumb, I can see and feel the grooves. So, just confirming and emphasizing the different parts of you. It's almost like one half of your mind. You're probably not even left or right brain. You're both. I bet. You're very smart. And I would say that, um, by the way, you cut your nails. Again, did the nail salon cut them for you? You cut them this morning. Okay. Um, you're uncertain of yourself. So there's some nails that are like smooth, straight line. Some nails that are curved and arched imperfectly and some nails they're like like you weren't sure what you were how you were cutting them right yeah so um it's like a rushed job like that tells me you like to rush things or you know people maybe at work co-workers or boss will tell you like hey you know slow it down or you know maybe you need to do this to drink coffee okay so that can explain it or it's just again uh sometimes you have these um 
these switches like you'll start something one way and then because I see in your nails you started cutting how do you cut your nails you start from pinky to thumb thumb to pinky thumb to pinky and then same on the other hand yeah you started kind of like if I'm honest like a, a sloppy and then you did smooth so it's like I think you just start you go ahead you don't question or doubt yourself confidently you begin and then when you realize you effed up you fix and correct later right so some people they choose to just try to be perfect at first and then they realize they suck at being perfect and then they just let go and just give up and lose hope so I think you're doing it the right way in a sense you're doing it the right way but you still I see a little sloppiness in your pinky so you still give room for sloppiness like you know that you know what I can still be lazy right <laughs> There's little knuckle hairs. Oh, sorry. It's okay. Um, uh, I would say... You're reserved, but there's times you like to let loose. You mostly hide under the shadows or behind someone else's shadow. Again, all of this is not 100% accurate, so I want you to discuss with me and say, hey, maybe that resonates, maybe that doesn't. It's not going to be perfect, you know? There's always going to be some discrepancies. But by shadow, what I'm indicating is that, like, let's say you're in a group project and presenting something, and you were going to talk. You just start talking, and then someone else starts talking over you. You immediately shush and let them talk because you'd rather... There's like a fear of failure, and you'd rather not embarrass yourself. You'd rather hide, and you'd let you'd rather be the idea or the brains. You know that that group partner only said that because you said that to them during the meeting, but you let them talk. You'd rather be behind the curtain, but you know the words coming out of their mouth are things to you. So, um, you're like the ghost writer. <laughs> you're like the person that writes uh, a pop star's music lyric and no one knows you did <laughs> okay um so that's kind of the role you choose to play because you're not that leader role you're not that person that's going to be just um out there doing that thing and in front of everyone although you you would like that you would, the idea of that would be nice but you quickly find that the majority do not agree with you or um, you yourself do not agree with yourself or not certain of your beliefs so that contradicts a lot of other people's beliefs and that can um, certainly offend some people so this is why you, you choose the best option is to stay behind closed doors and no one has to know your business that kind of thing okay let's see here this might be a little uncomfortable I'm just kind of gonna palpate some areas here give me a second When was the last time you got a massage? Okay. Never. Oh, you should. Um, there's a lot of tightness that says a lot about you, your selfless attitude. That yeah, it's almost like you'd rather let someone else enjoy a good massage for you, right? Um, you're the type of person at a party event. Uh, if someone has the last bottle of wine, you'd rather let them take it and enjoy their time, and it, it would enjoy give you more enjoyment to see them enjoy themselves, right? Something like that. I also see you're the type of person that is sort of like a parental role, so you would be the one driving everyone home when they're drunk, right? Um, maybe you'd be addressed as, um, quote-unquote, the party pooper, right? The person that's um, kind of a bit too serious sometimes. Maybe even you think for your own good, but it's hard for you to control that sometimes when you get in a certain mood and to get out of that. It's almost like you get in a certain state and it's hard to switch out of that state. You do like your sugars and sweets. I do see that. 
hands, you work a lot with your hands. A lot of scars and scratches. I think that shows also what you've been through in life and that you still came out on top and strong and gentle. You don't let life harden you. I think you still are maintaining a gentle, good attitude about it. People only tend to see in you your struggles rather than your successes. And I think that always seems to tend to come to play. Um, you have a lot of jealous eyes, I would say. Maybe you feel like lonely or you have a small friend group or circle, or maybe even no one. Or a small chance if you do have a lot of people in your life, they're kind of come and go, superficial connections, not really stable, yeah. But not when it comes to lovers, just with um, friendships and such. Maybe sometimes feel like people feel like you're pushing them away. Um, but it just makes you uncomfortable to meet new people, that's all. You take offense very easily, so one small critique can mean the end of a friendship, too. If it hits you hard enough. You're good with business with money. You're a bit frugal in some aspects, but generous in others, I would say. Try not to take everything to heart so deeply. That's my only concern for you. I see issues in the long run. I would say you're very big boned. So off the bat, that was spirit indicating that you're different. I do see some unique astral plane connections and beyond. I'd say perhaps something to do with Taurus or Gemini in your chart. Not that you are, but there is some like maybe in your fifth or fourth or sixth house, I would say, something along those lines that may have some influence in your life, some aspects. Okay, so give me a second. I'm just going to hold your hand and just feel what I feel. feeling like in my stomach it almost feels like tense a sick nervous feeling it's like you're nervous what I'm going to say next every word you listen carefully and you take it to heart but you forget quickly don't worry this session is recorded with an audio tape so you'll be able to hear it back you can take notes later and see what resonates with you but thank you for letting me talk sometimes I know I'm not right I can see on your face when something disagrees. Um, speaking of your face, you are very expressive. But I think you're just nervous to be yourself. Oh, it's okay. I know sometimes it gets emotional, but again, it's like your left hand shows that, but the right hand shows your power. So it's like your right hand dominant, aren't you? Yeah, I thought so. So I would say, or, or sometimes that could rarely mean both hands, ambidextrosity, but regardless, um, I see th this indicates to me that mm, your left hand is uncertainty, insecurity, um, doubting yourself. Sometimes you maybe even give money with that hand. Um, because it's like it's so nervous you just want to like make, make things better maybe you have that tendency to throw money at people like big tips or something because um you have that like insecure feeling within that you're not enough you're not welcome in, in a in a in a table in a group in an environment setting or like you're afraid of taking up 
space you need to bother someone deep down you know and that shows in your body language you see that contrast you know that just kind of the tendency to shell off like uh, think of someone sitting in an egg chair like they, their shoulders would be scrunched you know kind of like keeping to themselves you, you, you don't have room to spread out and just be you know so this is kind of how you came on this planet to um, and um, perhaps you were even born either in the afternoon or at night I would say right um, those have a tendency to be you know a little to themselves um, There's this beautiful contrast that I've never seen with anyone. This is why you're so different and unique in a good way. So, channel that nervous and powerful energy into one nervously powerful. <laughs> That's you. It's like you're afraid of your power. Maybe you've gotten a job with a big paycheck and you were afraid of the power that held and you quit. Or you got a lot of attention in a party one day or in a group environment. Maybe you had to get up in a podium and give a speech or present something or crack a joke at a stage. and It's just, you can do it if it's in front of yourself in the mirror, but if it's in front of a hundred people, um, you're afraid of the power that brings because you know that you can impress a hundred people like that and the power that delivers. It's easy to get you to get on that stage, but it's not easy to do what you have to do. So it's like... Um, Maybe you suffer with anxiety, maybe even depressive state of mind sometimes because you don't know what to do with that ability, so you just kind of retreat and don't do anything about it. Yeah, so that's your hand examine. <laughs> Pretty much, I forgot to mention the fingertips, they're very soft and nice and a healthy amount of oil. You're ready to get started. If you're told to do something, you jump in right away. You know exactly what you should be doing. And even in the here, these areas, the base of your knuckles. They're very smooth, usually, and they're very rough, but you have very nice. They give a gentle, easy job, not too much hard labor. Or if you do, you take very good care of your hands, but I can tell. There's a natural roughness with age and stuff, so obviously you're not, like, in your teens anymore, but, yeah, I can tell this. It's like, um, you just want to come here, accomplish what you have to accomplish, and get out, right? Like, you're just that kind of a person. Get it done. And that's maybe the tendency you have to rush certain jobs or things or tasks or opportunities. You just want it to be over with. You just want to get that, um, done. So, thank you. Thank you very much for allowing me to examine your hands. Uh, let's leave it off on a good note. Yeah, a lot of powerful energy. So if you could channel your uh, right hand dominance to something good, uh, good use for humanity, I think you'll come a long way. And you are going to meet a lot of like uh, Taurian and Gemini energies in the future. So I would say at least five years from now. So just keep that in mind. Um, when you move forward with these new energies, and sometimes it, it's old energies too, so old energies, Taurus, Gemini in your life will want to come back and talk to you and reach out because they know you are right. So keep that in mind, but um, also understand that you can channel this power wisely for good and understanding that there are no hard feelings just are. You just be. And when you know yourself, that holds power. So I hope this has given you the ability to tap into that power. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed and